Wow! Hello everyone and welcome to the Abroad Japan podcast. Probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host Chris Broad and we're joined by Sharla in Japan. Hi! Thanks yeah. for having me. Not at all, Charlotte. Anything to get to spend the evening with you in this ragged hotel room. It's very bad. Oh my god. So we're in Aomori <laughs> right now. Uh, obviously a few days ahead of the upload schedule. And if you're watching this on YouTube, on the surface, it actually looks like an alright hotel room. It I'll, does. I'll describe it for those of you that aren't watching on YouTube. Please don't. It's got a, a bed that's got a nice green sheet on it. It's a wall that's got like some artwork. There's lots of lamps, which looks quite cinematic, like a Steven Spielberg film. But what? It sort of lets it down is the moment you open the door, it smells like a 58 year old man's armpit. Like, to, to it's a. It's not an exaggeration, like, unfortunately. It smells like somebody went out in the rain all day and then they came back and their socks were all wet and they sort of laid them up on the wall. So the listeners really need this explanation. I think they do because I walked in, I, I nearly had an asthma attack, right? And also, one of our crew, uh, she. <laughs> Ellen, she walked into the room and was like, oh gosh, no, this is dire, and, and asked to be moved to a different room. Uh, but at least half the team have nice rooms, so yeah, well we done Yeah, got unlucky, then. unfortunately. You got the shit room. <laughs> so. Got the worst one. <laughs> I, I thought, right, this hotel, it's a, it's a chain hotel, yeah. some route in or something. It's been, it's been here like 30 years, and I thought, wow, 30 years? It stood the test of time. It must be good. No, it's 30 years old, and I haven't changed anything. Uh, maybe the floor. But anyway, other than that, guys, we're doing well. Um, Journey Across Japan is in full swing. If you've been following along, we're six episodes in now, about a third of the way through. Mm. And it's been a lot of fun. We've uh, eaten the spiciest ramen in Japan. You were lucky you escaped that one. I, yeah, I was safe from that one. Lucky devil. Uh, we went to the Fukushima Exclusion Zone for a mini documentary. And uh, we just saw Ryotaro and saw some geisha and went round his house. You you missed all the good stuff. You missed all the... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know about that. Um, yeah, no, did you see Ryotaro's house yet? You probably haven't seen the video. No, I haven't watched the video, actually. He bought a countryside house. Is it nice? It actually, it's, it's annoyingly good. He sent me photos and it did look really good. Was the bath okay. nice? The bath looked really good. The bath was exceptional. I'm jealous. It had a... He's got a real natural hot spring yeah. that you have to pay... How cool is that? I think you have to pay... Well, it's not cool. It's very hot. 45 degrees hot shot. How hot springs work, isn't it? But Can't anyway, leave. is it too late to leave? <laughs> yeah, it's not too late. Now you're here. You can't leave. You're going to suffer with me in this awful room. But uh, I, yeah, it's a, he's got like a hot spring. You pay like ten thousand dollars, and they can, like hook it up to the hot spring beneath the ground. Whoa! I think you've got to pay like a big upfront fee. Oh, one I million didn't yen. That. Yeah, you pay one million yen up front. Wow. It's about, actually about seven thousand dollars, and then you pay a monthly fee. Like an upkeep. Yeah, yeah. They have access to... Interesting. Uh, I was wondering teams. how that worked. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Definitely the highlight of his house. But uh, yeah, really cool. Kind of jealous. But also, he's he's got a view of the uh, the the Mount Zhao. Ah, oh, does he? Which is a nice mountain, wow. but it's also the mountain Ryotaro nearly killed me on six years ago <laughs> when we went skiing in a blizzard. It's like he <laughs> deliberately chose the house that had a view <laughs> overlooking the shit show PTSD-inducing mountain. Really from funny. my nightmares. Anyway, today uh, we're going to do a Q&A. You guys have sent yeah. in questions on Thank Instagram. You. Thank you for all your questions. Thank you very much. If you don't follow me on Instagram, do, because that's the future of social media. As Twitter <laughs> dies it? a slow oh, death well, yeah. and Facebook goes into oblivion, Instagram's still a thing. So, yes, we've got some questions. Um, yeah. Fire away. Let's, let's um, uh, dive into the Q&A. All right. Which day of the trip are you most looking forward to? I mean... Um, sh- Shavdalobes. Shavdalobes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I picked the hardest <laughs> name to pronounce. Shavdalobes. Uh, I am looking forward to... So I've really been looking mm. forward to Almori, which is kind of like the halfway mark. I don't... I love Almori. It's beautiful. I think we're coming up to the halfway hotel. mark. Yeah, this hotel's a downer. <laughs> um, Hirosaki. Yeah. The city of Hirosaki, which is coming up soon. Have you been there in the winter before? Oh, I don't know if I have. It's very... I have. It was really nice. And snowy, right? Yeah, it was really snowy when I went, but it's gorgeous. Hirosaki has a lot of Western influence in the mm. architecture, in the food. It's a really cool combination of like European culture and Japanese culture mixed together. And they're famous for apple pie. Yes. So. I remember last time I was there, I think with Ryotaro, we got a map with 50 apple pie. Oh my God. So you were there actually there filming many. it. And there was like 50 apple pie shops and you could do like a... A, like a bar crawl, but with apple pie. That should be the challenge. <laughs> Go to every single oh. apple pie shop. Oh my gosh. 
I'm still scarred after the eat the three <laughs> rather than some kids cat video. But, We've had some pretty horrible eating challenges that you guys will see soon. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Um, <laughs> but no, like, Hirosaki is probably the bit I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Um, have you got another question? Sure. We're going to do three questions each, then head over the phone. Um, if you and Sharla got another pet for the house that isn't a cat, what would it be? From Art of Yash, zero one. A dolphin. Shut up. I don't... Answer it properly. I don't know. Stop adding dolphin to everything. Uh, I think a dolphin would be cool. If you, if you were allowed to get <laughs> any car. pet, what would you get? A parrot. Would you? So I could be. I think Mara would eat that. He wouldn't eat it. Let's um, think critically here. Maro is you a cat. Get a pet tomorrow. If you had to get a pet tomorrow, what would you get? Maro would one hundred percent eat a parrot. He wouldn't. Maro gives it all that. He thinks he's hard. But then actually, <laughs> when the door opens and there's a gust of wind, he like shits himself and runs under a you bed. You haven't and seen him catch things. He's caught cockroaches oh, for me. A cockroach and an ant. Brilliant. Yeah. No, I think a parrot. I think he'd love the parrot. They'd become the best of friends. And like, <laughs> the parrot could talk. Like they'd meow. They'd be like. That'd the parrot would be like. Meow. If that worked out, that would be amazing. It'd be like the Lion King, but shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> will uh, would you ever bring a fan with you for an adventure? Says Gary Campbell. I've done that several times, actually. Lots of my good friends were actually, they started out as viewers that contacted me. Then we hung out in Tokyo together, and now we're friends. So I guess, yeah. I mean, for me, bringing Pete Premier 2 along, that's like bringing a fan. <laughs> and, <laughs> it'll kill me if he hears this. Please don't tell Pete I said that. Um, how did you find out that you wanted to do content creation for a living, says Philip? How did you find out? How did I find out? How did out? you discover that you wanted to YouTube? Well, it wasn't it wasn't really a choice in my case. I was forced to do a school project. You make it sound like you're a prison cat. I, I was. Do it! Make videos for fun! <laughs> make the people laugh! No, I was supposed to do a written blog, and I really hate writing. So I asked my university if I could do a YouTube vlog type style instead. Not mm. thinking anybody would ever see it. Um, and then people started watching it, and I felt like I kind of had to keep it up. And I never stopped. You never stopped. <laughs> but you did switch from... Doing them in Japanese to English, right? I did, yeah. After a few years of speaking only Japanese, I got a lot of English-speaking viewers, so I switched to English eventually. Ooh. Yeah. And as for me, I mean, I've been making videos since I was like 10, and I just love... I don't know, there's something fun about capturing video, editing it, playing around with it, the, the creativity. I think mm. no matter what was going to happen, even if I did become a YouTuber, I was always going to do some something. form of video. Like, yeah. for my friend's birthday, me and my friend's... When it was her birthday, we would make like a uh, like a sketch series every year and try and entertain her for her birthday, <laughs> stuff like that. And I always loved doing it. I always found just something rewarding in the in the creativity of it all. But uh, yeah, I love it. Even if I wasn't doing this, I'd still be doing it somehow, making videos. Uh, what are the crucial mistakes made by first time visitors of Japan and is countryside really worth the hype? Says who? Has a why so simple name? There's other name. <laughs> Why so simple name? Um, first of all, is countryside worth the hype? Is there hype around the countryside? There should be. There I is. feel like we're the only ones hyping up the countryside. I um, yeah. There's there's lots of hype that it's justified. Yeah. Like just today, we went to some rundown towns in Aomori, and mm. I don't know. I just some I just find something endearing about Japan's dying countryside. Well, for one, the buildings. people are so nice. People are nice. So friendly. And you just get the most jaw-dropping scenery when you do get out of these yeah. countryside towns as well. There's like shrines and mountains and forests and rivers. and mm. Like, yeah, for me, countryside Japan is the real Japan. As much as I it's cringy as that enjoy sounds. Tokyo. And it is cringy. <laughs> but, no, uh, it really is great. It yeah. is not, I think if this journey across Japan does anything, hopefully mm. it'll make you guys want to come out here and see it for yourself. Because yeah. not enough people are. I was recently in Kyoto, Osaka absolutely rammed right you couldn't move hotels booked and you come out here and they're all empty this hotel's <laughs> practically empty probably because of the smell why. yeah probably because of the smell <laughs> don't come out here uh <laughs> which of charla's cats do you like better oh you can't pick a favorite Paro. yeah i wonder which one is it the cat that opens all the doors of the house and jumps on me while i'm asleep or is it maro yeah. <laughs> maro is probably the most well-behaved cat in the universe so it's not fair to compare another cat tomorrow tuna's lovely you have to admit that tuna is growing up and he's less of a nightmare kitten now no he's he's quite sweet Orca. now he likes cuddling 
What is? Oh, he's really sweet. Enough about this annoying cabs. I'm glad to get away from him for a few days. Uh, what's oh. the next bucket list thing you want to do together? Says I am zero one zero zero. Sounds like a robot, <laughs> fucking exploding. Next bucket list thing. Uh, you think of something and I'll think of something. Let's see if it's the same thing. I know what it is. I know what yours is. Do you? What's that? Oh, what's that place called? Hiking in Scotland. Yeah. Hey. yeah you read my mind. <laughs> What's the name of the Sky. island? Isle of Sky, of course. Yes, both Charlotte and I want to go yeah. to the Isle of Sky and have a walk around. Maybe like, in the summer. One of the highlights this year was going to uh, Lake District when I attempted to propose to Charlotte, but Maybe didn't. horribly. Because I failed. Because of the weather, in fairness. Uh, <laughs> Who cares uh, about the weather? It was, no, it was like... It would have been memorable. It was more memorable going on the nice beach. It was With nice. the rock formation. What would you have done if it was raining on the beach day? I'd have just given up. I'd have thrown the ring in the sea and be like, God doesn't want this to happen. Great. No, I would have just done it there probably. Great. I would have given up or just gone into a nearby shed. And be like, oh, dry hair, done. <laughs> but no, Isle of Skye. Uh, I love those sort of places. I love kind of like mountains in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, Scotland looks amazing. <laughs> Scotland is We've like been to that. Scotland, but like... We, we haven't have. been to countryside Scotland. We've only been to the cities, so... Yeah. Edinburgh, beautiful. Probably the nicest city in the UK. Yeah. Uh, would you still re recommend teaching English in Japan? Says Lee Walkin, 23. I always recommend it to everybody because it's an easy segue into living in Japan if you want to be here long term like Chris and I have. I feel like it's a good way to start out. It's uh, one of the easiest jobs to get, of course, and you can kind of find your way in Japan while you're doing this rather simple job of English teaching. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. I, I liked it. And I, 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 so many times I'm always like, oh, I remember in my first three years in Japan, I did this, I did that. The amount of times I reference those kind of first three years as a teacher, even though I also sometimes think I've, I've glamorized it a bit, you know, when you look back almost nostalgically on your own past at times. I often look back on those first three years. It was really good, I was very happy. Well, the first three years are always the most exciting. They are, but like, when I also dig deep into those memories, there was also a lot of like, com like unhappiness. And mm. I, I, there was a lot of times I thought, what the fuck am I doing? Working as a human tape recorder after three years still. Mm. Um, so I d definitely enjoy what I do now a bit more, but I never regret doing it and it was a lot of fun and if you're yeah. looking at coming to Japan and you want a job or a way in, like, that is a really good way to do it. Just be careful who you pick because there are some agencies, uh, as it Gabba, who recently uh, changed the policy and made it a lot more difficult yes. to, to uh, teach or there's a, if you don't show up to your class you get fined a lot if you're sick. It was like, if you're sick or dying, yeah, a few of them are a you have to pay. Um, really dodgy. The route that Chris went is probably the best if you can do it. Yeah, jet program. jet program or Interact is yeah. quite good. And I just showed up randomly in Japan and found jobs at like private schools. So that's another way to do it. Absolutely. But yeah, jet program. Uh, Chris, what's your skin routine? Says uh, Ridwan Kamaral. My skin routine is nothing short of an art form. I wake up. People always ask I... Chris his skin routine. I don't think he's washed his face once in his life. Fuck up. Have you ever used like a facial wash product yeah. and wash your face? I use Oshibori. I wipe my face oh with my Oshibori God. hand towels oh, every day. There's your answer. And I <laughs> use the blood of my enemies on my face. It's unfair. He's naturally beautiful. Naturally fit and healthy and stunning. Next question. Apart from all my internal, my, all my internal <laughs> organs failing one by one. The face looks good. The skin looks good, apparently. But everything else is fucked. Tragedy. Um, is it difficult to go around North Japan without a car? Says Janice Mendoza. It's not difficult. It's not ideal. Uh, it's doable. I think everywhere we've been on this trip, the cities of like Hachinohe, Aomori City. Yeah, they're all quite accessible by hmm. public transit, trains, buses. But like, I think you are limiting your sense of adventure a little bit mm -hmm. if you're not driving. Unfortunately, well, people can't drive. I but can't drive. If you can drive, get an international driver's license and rent a car here because yeah. it's a very painless, easy process and it'll open up a lot of doors and a lot of places that you can kind of explore off the beaten track. Yeah, and I think the best parts of North Japan you kind of see when you have a car and you can drive off into the mountains and just have that whole place to yourself. So I would definitely recommend it. If you can get a car, if you can rent a car, do it. Uh, if you both had to change something about your journey on YouTube, what would it be, says Noah? Ooh. Change something. What would you change about your journey on YouTube? Your journey. 
can't really think of anything. <laughs> well, like, of course there's things that both of us could have done better. Um, but it just seems silly to look back and be like, oh, I would have done this differently. Mm. Because, I don't know, it led us to where we are now, so... Yeah. I don't works out well. I mean, yeah, I'm very happy with how things have gone. I think maybe I should have posted a bit more often. Mm. Uh, often I'm like, I can't make a video unless it's perfect in my mind mm. and it has to be the certain way. I think I should have loosened up a little bit and made more videos. But at the same time, I'm proud of nearly every video I've released with a few, few exceptions, including one awful live stream I did in 2015. What was that? The one I did in Tokyo. What happened? With... Uh, uh, Simon and Martina at the time. Oh God, that they were, they were nice and they helped. Oh me God, I kind of like uh, locked out that part of my. I was gonna do a video life. on it. I was gonna make a video last Christmas, I think, for the twelve days of Christmas series I did, and in that I was gonna do the worst thing I've ever done. It was yeah. gonna be about this live show I did. It has nothing to do with Simon and Martina, by no, the way. No, no, they saved my <laughs> You kind my of life. worded it in a way that made it sound like they were. Bad. I did my first no. ever big live show was like sponsored. Yeah, by... it was like this really cringy sponsorship deal. Yeah, it was a it was a network I was with. I think that was my biggest regret. I was mm. I've been part of like two or three networks. We're talking years ago now, like six, seven years ago. Mm. And I say to anyone doing YouTube, don't join a network no. unless they have something incredible to offer you. These networks didn't. Uh, and they, they kind rarely of do. took advantage of me a little bit and they made mm. me do this sponsored live stream that was, uh, it's looking back on it, it's, it's hilariously like awful and atrocity of video. But yeah, it's, some things are best wiped from your mind and that <laughs> live show was one that. of them. My, and you're not gonna find it, so don't try looking for it. <laughs> it's very much gone. It's like privated somewhere. Uh, <laughs> dear, oh dear, ooh. Uh, would you consider doing a journey across Europe? If yes, in which countries? Uh, this is awesome. I am Charlotte. Um, uh, yeah. Where would you go? Where do we go? Where? Everywhere. We haven't been to that many European countries, so Hungary would be number one. Uh, then we would go to probably back to Norway. People, it was people be like, why is she shades of Hungary? <laughs> like you got to use the context. <laughs> My mum's side of the family is Hungarian and I've never been there and I love the food so Hungary would be number one. She loves one. a bit of Viktor Orban. <laughs> to be fair this is interesting for those of you who know your politics in Europe Charlotte once showed around the uh, the Prime Minister of Hungary Viktor Orban. I was his who's translator. A notorious almost dictator ruler who's uh, caused a lot of problems. At the time I think he hadn't been in the office for very long he was pretty new. Yeah, right, right, ages right. Ages ago. Before we stirred up the pot. Yeah. And uh, Charlotte, it's the idea of just you showing around Viktor Orban, this like this psychopathic I was the prime minister of Hungary. person at my university <laughs> that had like a Hungarian connection and could speak English and Japanese. So they're like, yeah, you can be his translator. Like, Fucking Larry. Sure. <laughs> I would, that would be such, you shouldn't have vlogged it. Like, hey guys, it's me and Victor. <laughs> what do you... Was I Victor. even doing YouTube then? I guess I was, yeah. That would be the vlog to watch, but my God, yeah. Um, uh, crikey. So many questions about where we're going to travel next. I suppose Spoilers. I didn't... Spoilers, uh, we can't spoil it. Would you consider, for me, doing a journey across Japan in Europe? No, I don't think I would. But I do want to do some videos in Europe, for sure. I love Rick Steves. <laughs> if you don't know what Rick Steves is, go and watch Rick Steves. <laughs> It's a Canadian, uh, sorry, Ameri Canadian? no, he's American. Oh, I was American really proud guy. For a second there. He travels around Europe oh. and he finds glee and delight in the most mundane things. He's amazing. And he's just. We have has, to replicate that. Has the most whimsical voiceover. It's like, I'm going to a pub to meet the homeboys. And it's just like, <laughs> so one episode cute. he goes to like a pub in like, like Manchester. And he's like, I'm just chilling with the locals. <laughs> and it cuts to like, like, what are you doing here? What are you doing in my pub? Get out of here. And it's just. You've got to watch Rick Steves. It's so, good. but it's also quite good. You you get to learn about Europe in a very sort of chilled out way. Yeah, it's like it's very chill. relaxing. It's chill. That's what I want to do when I retire from YouTube. I want to become Rick Steves. <laughs> uh, can if you could only visit one region or town in Japan on the first visit, which one uh, should you visit? It says Stardust. On the Mine. first visit, only one region or town. Let's take Tokyo out of the equation, obviously, because okay. that's okay. given and yeah. Kyoto. Okay. Where are you going to go? It's a good That's question. So hard. I want to say Kanazawa. Oh, uh, eh. It's good. It is very good. I think Takayama. Because Kanazawa, 
It's still oh, a Takayama decent size city. Is good. Takayama, you've got like. We walked around there, didn't we, while we were filming for a recent video that came Takayama's out. Takayama's amazing. I don't think I would cons uh, suggest it as the one place to go because <gasps> it feels Blasphemy. very touristy. Whereas in Kanazawa, you get a mix of a little bit of touristy over here and a little bit of regular Japan life over here. True, true. Um, Takayama feels very much like a town that was just made for tourism. What about Aizu Wakamatsu? I where we just Aizu. got back from. Aizu's amazing. Like, uh, we didn't really cover too much of Aizu on Journey Across Japan recently mm. because I've done it so many times in previous videos. So uh, like, I did want to go back and see the Sazaidor Temple. Oh, yeah. That sort of incredible spiral. temple with the spiral structure, right? Oh, uh, Aizu is really cool. And uh, we, we went to the eel restaurant with Ryotaro there, mm. caught our own eels, or kind of caught them, but then dropped them because they were so slippery. They got a show at 1960s museum that's really awesome. Mm. Uh, and it's near Kitakata, so you can go for ramen afterwards, the town with the most ramen ever, so... I do like Aizu. And it's touristy, but right. it's more like aimed at Japanese tourists than foreign tourists. Aizu doesn't feel overly touristy. Yeah, maybe that's why, because it's more aimed at Japanese viewers. Yeah. Visitors. Go there. I think it's accessible without a car. I think so. And you very get good sake. If you yeah. are a, a sake connoisseur, Aizu has amazing sake. <laughs> God, some of these questions. Uh, okay. What's your favourite memory in Japan? Says K Skull. Favorite memory in Japan. Apart from hanging out with me. God, I've been here like 20 <laughs> years. <laughs> is it the time you showed Victor Orban around definitely. Tokyo? It definitely is. I'm going to have to think about it. That's that. a memory to last a lifetime. Uh, I want to say some of my best memories. I can't think of one in particular, but I used to have the. I was friends with an older lady, like quite a bit older. I think she was in her 70s. I was teaching her English. And we used to hang out and go to cocktail bars together. Really? Just chat and do karaoke. That sounds like a replica of my best memory. One of my favorite memories, like uh, Ito Sensei. Oh, Ito Sensei. The guy I learned yeah. English from. Yeah. Or sorry, learned Japanese from. Kind Although, of similar relationship. Yeah, there's something nice about meeting somebody who's quite elderly mm. in their later years. And they're quite... Ito, like Ito Sensei is very reflective on his past and all the things he'd done. And uh, sadly passed away now. Mm. But... Uh, it's nice spending time with someone in their later years. Yeah. They're reflecting on everything. You have these really kind of emotional moments. And um, he was supposed to teach me Japanese, but he just spoke <laughs> You English. just end up like well, he just, drinking. He'd open the book <laughs> and uh, bless him, his, his memory was going. And he'd be like, uh -huh. last week we covered chapter six. We'll do chapter seven. Like, well, we did chapter seven two weeks ago. <laughs> and, and it would just speak English in the end uh -huh. and um, reminisce on his old times. And then we'd go to like a snack bar and have a drink and a chat mm. and uh, he'd smoke a lot <laughs> but what, what a great man so yeah those sort of memories the people you encounter yeah and, you know hanging out with Natsuki as well the last few lines of my book I think I, I can't remember if they were or if I changed them it was going to be Natsuki and I sitting in like a yakitori restaurant just reminiscing mm. and, and talking about the future back when I first died in the snowy winter months I think that's why I love winter traveling in Tohoku even though there's been like no fucking snow on this trip. I haven't seen any. I've seen like a couple dirty piles of snow on the yes. side of the road, but both of us packed for like serious winter weather. Only today did it get cold. It's cold, but it's not snowing. Yeah. yeah. But like it, like North Japan, it's very kind of cozy in the winter months. Brutal, yeah. cold, windy, horrible. But you go inside into a, you know, a yakitori restaurant mm. or izakaya, and the heat is going and everyone's having fun and it's my hot sake, atsukan it's called. Like that is one of the nicest things about mm -hmm. Japan in winter. And we're almost there on this trip. But we're not, because the snow isn't falling. Maybe Yamagata. Yamagata might have some snow. Yeah, it right? should do, it should do in yeah. theory. Yeah. Uh, Ken Charlotte beatbox, says Gant. Do it. You do it and I'll try to right. copy you. <laughs> oh. Wow, it's so much harder than I thought it was. It's easy. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gotta like wet your lips and go like that. Why are you doing it? It's like you try to slurp. Okay, all right, stop this. There's people <laughs> listening to this and watching it. <laughs> uh, is Connor okay? Says Beowulf. I talked Connor. to him today. He was alive. Did you? Yeah. Oh, I uh, Connor was in a video we just shot like the day before yesterday. And we really got fucked up. Um, you can actually see why at the end of the most recent video that came out. Oh, really? Uh, there's, a, there's a coming up section, oh. yeah. And that will allude 
to what happened. Oh, no. uh, but it was brutal, and he was not Die JB at the end of that video. <laughs> and neither was I, actually. Poor Connor. Uh, what is your most cherished possession, says Aberrant Vagary? Cherished <laughs> possession? Apart from Mari the cat. I was going to answer Mari. No. Cherished possession. <sighs> Other than me. Other than you. Oh. You must have something. Mine would be... Oh, what would mine be? That's really hard. Cher cherished possession. All right, I have a little booklet. I have a little book. It's about this big, so it's, it's kind of very small. For those of you listening, it's probably like B5 or smaller. Mm -hmm. It's a blue book. And in it, I, I wrote two, three years ago all my favourite stoic philosophical quotes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, on a recent trip, when we're back in the UK, I, I memorised them all. Yeah, and then he's I, really good, weirdly good at memory. Yeah, and I, and I think I forgot. I could be like <laughs> number twenty-one, and he would remember. Yeah, I get shouted to like grill me. And it was, and it's like oh, she'd be like no, number twenty-one, and I'd be like, control thy passions, lest they take vengeance upon thee. And it was all a bit weird, but I love that book, and uh, yeah, I, I, it's quite important to me. So also, my camera. One thing. Probably the camera's my. Your camera, really? I love my. But camera. you could just buy another camera. No. So surely that's not a prized possession because it's replaceable. Shit. Like, you wouldn't notice if I just trashed that and bought you a new one. You wouldn't even right. notice. My Fuji... Oh, I don't know. Fuji camera. <laughs> I have no possessions. The world is my possession. <laughs> What's yours? Uh, that's hard. But I probably... Maybe that the first photo book you made me. Oh, ooh. What's that? When you used to put effort into them. Oh, not like that. <laughs> I used to... I would make a book and I'd put photos from what we did kind of throughout the year, mm -hmm. right? And it would be like I'd have A, a to Z, mm, and each letter really would have a memory. Point. Like L would be like London. Yeah. B would be like breakfast. And then be like a picture <laughs> of some fried breakfast I had. I was like, that's that was my put F in. Not like now. Pretty good. When I get you for your birthday this year. Can't remember it. Can't remember. Don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not very nice. <laughs> well, I don't remember. All the effort I put in, and you don't remember what I bought you. What well, did I get you then? Love, the, the the gift of love, and <laughs> it all blends into probably one. socks. I don't know. <laughs> uh, what will be your creative goal in 2024? Says Bert Daniels. Bert Daniels number three. Creative goal. Creative goal. Uh, I really need to stop talking about wanting to make a film and just fucking get on with it. Uh, what so do you feel like stopping you? Why haven't you? I think an I an idea like that it. excites me enough. I, like, I can make a short film now. Would it be good? Mm. No, but I could do it. But I want an idea that I'm fully invested in because it's going to take a lot of time resources. Mm. Like, I don't just want to make a simple short film set in a room with two people chatting. I want mm. something a bit more impressive, like a calling card. And uh, so I think I've set myself up to fail by having very lofty <laughs> ambitions. But uh, maybe it'll I don't. I don't yeah, think there's a problem it? in that. I don't think there's a problem in that. I you think... want to be excited about it. If you're going to put that much money and time into something, you've got to really be on yeah. the idea of it. I'd love to do something set in an alternate reality where the yeah, the, the bubble, Japan's bubble, didn't burst in like 1991. Because uh, in the 1980s, particularly yeah. the late 80s, Japan was on top of the world. Yeah. It was. If that just kept going. Yeah, it was second only to America. And a lot of America feared it was going to take over, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then it didn't. It, the bubble burst and it had the 20 lost years, the two lost decades, as they're called. But what happens if that hadn't happened? Because you see a lot of Japanese creativity in film industry, and books, all sorts of things. A lot of it sort of died off after the 80s. Uh, not that Japan stopped. Like, Japan was a powerhouse in the 90s, but something... Certainly in the film industry, the 90s weren't as kind to Japan as the 80s were. And a lot of companies cut back on research and development spending and... Uh, yeah, I think if Japan had kept on going, it would have been a very different like yeah, country. Uh, but... It's weird to think about. Yeah. So anyway, I, I want to do a film set in like an alternate universe in that regard. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. What about you? I'm focusing more on my stationary business next year. We kind of had to rework uh. everything because the EU set up a bunch of new postal regulations. So it's been a nightmare sending things overseas from Japan. Uh. Um, is the UK now it's also not good yay at Brexit. first everyone was oh. like yay Brexit but no the UK also oh. same problem now God, the one good thing to come out of Brexit yeah, cheap reasonably priced <laughs> Japanese stationery and even that we've lost it god damn it so, we get anything out of Brexit I'm gonna have to rework that and 
do some new things in the new year. Uh, what is the British mentality? He says Instinct 2008. What does that mean? Like, what do you think the British mentality is? Stiff upper lip, stoical. stoical. Great skin care. Stoical. <laughs> mm. Don't know. I find British people are a lot less emotionally charged yeah. than North Americans, which is why, like, I did a collab recently with somebody, and they're very happy and excited. What and then that? I might say, but the camera then put, like pans to me, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, to be fair, he himself was also British. I think he was just a happier <laughs> British guy than I was. Uh, but like, I've noticed when I collab with American or Canadian friends, they're a lot more animated and excited, and I'm just like, Ugh. yeah. But maybe that's just that's, me. No, I, don't I think that's a general vibe. You could probably generalize that the UK is a lot more chill. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what do you think is the hardest thing about moving to Japan? Uh, I'm not a big one. God, I didn't have any issues, so that's not. I, I didn't. I can't really think of anything that you've, was hard. You've for me. asked the wrong two people here. Like, I never got homesick, not because I despised mm. my family and friends back home. Well, I was so excited about living somewhere. And like, for me, like life started the moment I moved to Japan because before that, it was mm. like school and then secondary school and then university it's constant preparation it's constant waiting for something fun to happen well they, they weren't that bad and then like i got to japan it's like let's go life can begin now and that's how i felt the diff the hard actually you know, the hardest bit was giving up independence for me personally i don't giving think up independence. because i couldn't do because i didn't speak japanese oh well i didn't oh, know the enough. The subtleties of right. Japanese culture and like. So you relied on friends to help get you. Get your with bank, things, get right. my phone, doing anything basic. Right. I actually was quite fearful of just walking into a restaurant mm. uh, because people in Tohoku are quite shy and a bit awkward. And if they detect you don't speak Japanese, they sort of panic. Mm. And uh, yeah, I got quite nervous going into restaurants, just doing, just doing things. And I. Yeah. I, I guess uh, daily task type stuff is kind of the scariest if you don't speak the language. Yeah. Bank, setting up banks. Banking and that. documents. But yeah, yeah and, and I, I felt like a real burden on my friends here and my colleagues because every time I had to do something important, I had to mm. like bring them along for it. So mm. losing that degree of independence, I'd say. But that's the hardest thing for me rather than like homesickness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you? And I genuinely can't think of anything. Nothing. No problems. <laughs> People always ask me this question. I don't know. I feel like I had more issues living in Canada than I do here. Like rent was so unaffordable. Where really? I'm from getting a decent job was so hard where I was from, and here everything just seems to work. Is that a statement well, on Japan or Canada? <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> I don't, know. don't know. Don't know. But a lot of people do struggle with homesickness, but that's never been an issue for me. I guess I've always been pretty independent. So maybe I was more homesick than I realised at the time. Though looking back, I used to. Mm. Though I, I haven't done it for years now. When I first moved here. I would always have a British TV show on in the background. Oh, yeah, you said apartment. you did that. Yeah, I'd, I'd fall asleep watching, like, Blackadder, Only Fools and Horses, or mm. Peep Show, or something like that. And I think I needed that <laughs> to have some mm. sanity, because I didn't feel that. Putting on a Japanese TV it was very alien, very crazy, mm. didn't know what was going on. I think that was... Not overly relaxing. Yeah, and I think that was how I got over any homesickness and regular phone calls. Like, we forget these days that you could be in the middle of the Japanese mountains, like North Japan, very remote, and then you can pull out your phone and have a fucking 4K conversation with your parents. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, we've just uh, just been hoovering and, and mopping <laughs> the floor, and we're just doing it. It's just like, yeah. You can have a mundane conversation that otherwise would have taken, like, three years to get back home to the UK but on, like, 500 ships and a letter. So it's <laughs> something, taking out the equation, being able to communicate that fast, I think. Yeah. So. Couldn't do that when I first moved here. You need to write by pen. Emails. Email. No, we had emails at the time. <laughs> we had been taken by horse and carriage and, uh, and steamship <laughs> back in the day. But thank you for all your questions, guys. If you don't follow on Instagram, do follow there because we'll do this again, I'm sure, soon. And um, there'll be more podcasts. I know uh, we didn't have a podcast on Thursday, so my apologies yeah. for that. It's been pretty crazy doing this, as you can imagine. But pretty so far... Crazy is an understatement. It is. But it's been a lot of fun travelling with you, Sharla, and uh, travelling with the team who are hiding. It's been really fun. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's been it's a real been epic journey. And really, it's only just beginning because we're only a third of the way in on YouTube as well. So, Everybody mush up. Yes. Keep watching, guys. The next episode is a big one. Probably the biggest of the whole series, actually. Should be a good one. And, uh, yeah, I, I think it will be a fun one. Filming it was certainly... 
epic experiencing experiencing it was uh, also certainly traumatic but uh, <laughs> yeah we'll see that soon but for now guys as always keep your stories comments questions coming into abroad japan podcast at gmail.com and hopefully next time we see you in a few days time we'll have uh, jemmy yeah and soon. we won't be in the smelliest hotel room in all of North Japan. I can't wait to leave. Yes, like, <laughs> let's get out of here. But for now, guys, we'll see you soon. Have yourselves a good one. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. I'm going to eat these apples. Are you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>